Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Well, hi everyone, welcome back to Photoshop User TV. I am Corey Barker and I am joined today by a very special guest. <laughs> he hasn't been here in a while. It Mr. has Dave been a while. Cross. Hello everyone. Been? Very good, thank you. Good, good. Nice. And of course, over in the weather station, taking, uh, filling in for Pete, because Pete is actually on vacation right now, is the lovely Jessica. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi How's it going way over there? Good. Way, see, it's kind of empty over there. <laughs> there's, 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 there's usually a big, usually a big Cintiq over there. All right. <laughs> So we are brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals who bring you this fine magazine. Oh, right sorry. Oh. It's been a while, I forgot. <laughs> Photoshop user magazine, all part of your NAP membership. And of course, you can buy and find them at fine book retailers everywhere. Mm -hmm. So here we are. Yes. It seems very unfamiliar for two reasons. It's been a while, and also I don't think I've ever sat on this side. I'm it's a little, odd, isn't it? I'm a little thrown I've off. I've just got, I've gotten this <laughs> this side of by habit, and I just I showed up here. I'm just like that's okay. I don't mind. It's a nice yeah. change. It changes things up a little bit. Where's your tablet? I, you know, I rushed out of my office to come down here, and I did not bring it, so I'll just have to pretend that I've got the new Photoshop user tablet over here to mm. play with. Indeed. Well, <laughs> yeah. I figure for the length of this tutorial, I can probably manage with a trackpad for. This well, if you have to. <laughs> you have yours, right? I do. Yes, check. All right. All right, before we get into it, let's uh, talk about, we have a Peach Pit uh, book deal, of course, you know, the e-deals we've been talking about. We have a limited time offer, 40% off. This book right here, for once we actually have the book itself. There you go. It's Light Right, right here by Joe Levine and Brad Bartholomew. I just love saying that. I just wanted to say that that way. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the, the ebook price is $35.99, but the Kelby TV price with 40% off is $21.59. That's a very specific number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you use the coupon code Kelby TV at the Peach Pit website, as you can see right there, that offer ends on June 30th, so be sure to take advantage of that. Right. With that, I guess we can just dive right in it. And Dave's going to uh, kick things off with something. He has, I hear, a video. I do. I'm, I'm really intrigued by the whole CS6 and CC video thing. Mm -hmm. It's in part because you don't have to start with video. And I think a lot of people think, but I don't have video. Well, mm -hmm. if you don't, you can still do some pretty interesting things. It's catching on quick. So what I've done here is all I've done is these are a series of photos, uh, portraits I took of the same girl, and I just imported them all in here. I use this little option here, which is add media. And when I did, I just automatically put them on this timeline one after another. So if nothing else, now I have a little slideshow that just kind of goes from one image to the other. It's not terribly interesting, so we could make it more interesting by using things like these different uh, transitional effects, like put a crossfade in here, so now when we do this, it kind of fades a little bit. Mm. And then you can also do interesting things, and this is to me where it gets interesting. Now we're talking about doing things over a period of time. So, for example, I say when this image starts, and I should mention, by the way, that when I brought these photos in, I'm they were quite large, mm -hmm. and I made them all smart objects just to give me the opportunity to do things. So I can say, let's start off here, and at this point, I want to, at this point in the keyframe, or at this point in the timeline, add a keyframe, which just means start something here. Then I'll do free transform, and, oops, sorry, move over to where I want it to end. At that point, I do free transform, and now I could, for example, scale up and move over to here. When I hit enter, it adds that second keyframe, and now just like that, I'm able to do just something a little more mm -hmm. interesting. Kind but like again, it's still not video, it's just that kind of little mm -hmm. transition. But then something else occurred to me, and I thought, the whole point of this to me, the video, is it's still based on things we do in Photoshop all the time. So one of the thoughts I had, thought, I had that I thought would be kind of interesting was to add some text here. Now initially it just adds it sort of arbitrarily wherever, but I need to pull this out of this video frame so that it's going to end up on its own little track in the timeline because I need to be able to position it in a particular place and where I want it to be positioned is after that kind of zoom effect has start I want the text to be here but rather than just have it kind of pop on there I thought this is where we can take advantage of things we would do in Photoshop. So if you ignore the fact that this video for a moment and ask yourself, how could you make it look like that text was partially behind her? The answer would be add a layer mask, mm -hmm. right? That's just the mm -hmm. way we do it. So I'm on this type layer. 
but then I activate this other layer so I can use a tool like the quick selection tool and I'm going to deliberately do it. So all I'm worried about is sort of the side of her face here. I'm not worried about selecting everything because I'm just trying to hide it behind here. Mm -hmm. Something like this. And I go back to the type layer and I'm going to add a mask. Now initially it's the wrong way around. So I invert it. And the real trick to this is you've got to unlink the two of them so then I can make it look like the text is in behind. Ah. So having done those quick little steps, now I can say at the beginning I want the text to be here, and at the end, I want the text to be here. And as soon as I do that, now I have, <laughs> see, program error. Just ignore that part for a moment, and imagine <laughs> that when I did this, okay, so this is where you have- That very thing you were talking about. Plan B, uh, do I still have it? I guess I didn't. So if I could show you this, you would see how wonderfully it gradually mm -hmm. comes out from behind her face. I have no idea why that gave me a program error. It unfortunately course, has happened before. Of course, that key, you can do it manually just drag it. Yeah. <laughs> well, even <laughs> now, you see, that's the problem. Even there, it's not letting me. Don't go breaking Photoshop, Dave. <laughs> I know. I hate when I break Photoshop. So <laughs> let's just real quickly see if. The key uh, there, of course, is that layer mask because it's always by default linked to the object. So enable to. There we go. Because otherwise, it would have meant. There you I go. I just had to close and reopen it. But you see there, after the. Mm -hmm things start zooming in now, it kind of the text kind of reveals from yeah. in behind. So yeah. what I love about this is while it's video, we're using techniques that are every day in Photoshop, like right. masks, we're just adding some motion to it. I think what's interesting too is that you say is, you know, people say, I don't have a video clip. I don't have anything to do with it. It's like, well, not just video, but you're doing keyframe animation. Mm -hmm. You can do motion graphics. Right. I, I am in fact doing a motion mm -hmm. graphics in Photoshop class at Photoshop World nice. because videos become so mm -hmm. prominent and everything like that. So well, in fact, it's just built in, and of course, I didn't show you this, but I have a little, you probably can't hear it, but. And you can add audio. So we've got our little, I'll move it all the That's little That's so bit. great for people like us, because we're already comfortable in Photoshop. We don't have right. to learn something Absolutely. new. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's what I, when I've taught classes on video, the first thing I show them is, here's a bunch of things you would do to a still photo, mm -hmm. like adjustment layers and things like that. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, they can also be moving. Yeah. So things that you're used to doing, like masking and clipping masks and all those things, just apply it to some motion, including just a bunch of still images to make a pretty cool slideshow. And of course, if you're on CS6, the video features are in both standard yep. and extended versions. It's not right. just an extended thing like it was in the previous versions. Now. And of course, in CC, it's everywhere. Yep. So it's all inclusive, including 3D. There you go. Would you save that out as a QuickTime movie, or, or Absolutely. how would you share Yeah, that? and that's the, the other nice part is, so you save this document, it's a PSD file, but once you're finished, then you just choose render video, you can have all the standard, you know, QuickTime, H.264, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff for video, but you still have the layered Photoshop file should you need to edit the video further. Amazing indeed. Cool, fun stuff. I always have fun with that with Cinemagraphs, which I think mm -hmm. I might do something like that next week. All right, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I have a little something uh, with 3D. Of course, not surprisingly. <laughs> I'm shocked. And Jessica's gonna share, I saw something she did earlier, it was actually kind of cool and fashion-y, so stay with us, we'll be <laughs> right back. Get the world's best photography, lighting, and Photoshop training at Photoshop World. Here's the top 10 reasons you should attend. It's three nonstop days of real world training where you can get personal attention and unlimited access to the world's top instructors in Photoshop and photography. When you attend, you'll have chances to experience hands-on live shoots and workshops, outrageous after hours parties and events, and hundreds of classes for all skill levels, along with dozens of opportunities to network with other attendees. In-depth one-on-one portfolio reviews from industry professionals and see new cutting edge technology. Plus, you can even earn continuing education and graduate level credits from attending. This is the must attend conference for photographers and Photoshop users. Register before August 2nd and save $100. Sign up today, Photoshop World, the world's best Photoshop and photography conference. Well, we are back and uh, as you probably just saw, very shortly coming up in September is Photoshop World, Absolutely. our most favoritest event. Absolutely. Biggest Photoshop <laughs> event on the face of the earth and it's just a whole lot of fun too. I love it because this one's coming up is in Las Vegas. I know you're a big Vegas guy. I've never really been big on Vegas. I just love the fact that you get multi-thousand Photoshop enthusiasts in one place, and it, it happens to be Las Vegas, which it, is kind of that, interesting. That, it absolutely is the fun part about it. The funny thing is, when I get there, I'm absolutely excited to be in Vegas, but it, by the time it gets to like the second to the last day of the show, <laughs> You're I'm like, like I am so I'm ready done. to go home, I can't stand this place, please, because I'm out of money. And I'm out, <laughs> by then, I'm out of money and out of sleep, so I'm completely just irritable. Well, I'm the other thing that there. surprises me is that people even have time to enjoy Vegas, because Photoshop True. World, there's a lot going on between all the classes yes. and yeah. social events. We certainly and have like a that. busy schedule to keep everyone 
everybody mm -hmm. busy, you know, not just the events, but the evening stuff that's going on as well. It certainly keeps you plenty busy. But uh, and then you have to go out. And you have to. Yes. You have to. <laughs> Some of the, old, the younger guys do. Uh, so PhotoshopWorld.com, you can go find. I'm sure there's an early bird special going on right now. Right, you can mm -hmm. sign up and you can see all the schedule and the classes. And also make sure you check out the. Uh, expo part of it. There's a lot of vendors there, including some of our sponsors, like Wacom is always there, and uh -huh. lots of others. So if you want a chance to go explore what's new and exciting in the world of products and software, you can do that as well as all the learning that takes part of Photoshop World. Indeed. So with that in mind, I'm sure Corey now is ready to do a little preview of the kind of thing that you a might see at Photoshop a World. A little preview. Little it's preview. actually. Uh you know, with um, we all know that CC just was released, and, uh, and I'm very excited about a lot of the new features that have uh, especially been come around with 3D. There's been a lot of great enhancements with it, and one of the things is actually something I wanted to show you. That's um, something I've kind of struggled with, not really struggled with, but it's just something that you you find that was a little bit of an obstacle in the earlier versions when you're playing with 3D. And I'm, I'm first, I have to spell correctly. That's say, is that Latin yeah. for te texturite? It's texturite. <laughs> it's Latin for the texture. No. All right. So, you know, 3D text, of course, is a big thing, you know, with 3D. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Now, let's just say I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, first turn off my background layer here so we can actually see what's happening. Let's just give us a color. So, all right. So, I'm going to go ahead and make this 3D. I'm just going to go to the 3D menu here and choose new 3D extrusion from selected layer. And it goes ahead and applies the extrusion. I'm actually going to rearrange my workspace here. So, I want to talk about textures. I want to apply a texture to a text like this. And I actually have a texture on my desktop here. It's just this kind of like rough, rusty kind of texture. I like that. So what I want to do is actually apply it to all the faces of this text. Well, when my text is already created, what I would need to do is actually go into the 3D menu and go to, let's say, the front inflation here, which is the front face of the text. Then I'll go in here to the diffuse setting, which is actually the base color. It's the base uh, color or texture of your file. Like if you know an apple is red, but then you've got the, the lighting and the texture mm -hmm. on it. Those are all different layers of that. So the diffuse is the base. So let's go and do load texture and locate that burnt amber texture there. And I'm going to click open. And it applies it to the face of that text. Great. Well, in the past, what I would need it to do to apply it to all the other faces of the text is go and select like the extrusion material, which is the sides, and then go and do that same step and, and load that thing over and over again. Now they've added something in CC that makes it a little bit easier. If I go and select this, I'm going to go into that diffuse menu. Notice down here, it sh also shows me it shows me new texture and load texture, but also any textures I have already applied uh -huh. elsewhere to this object. So it recognizes that burnt amber. Do I want to use an existing texture? Yes, I do. Locate that. And boom, it applies it to the side of that texture, hmm. side of the text. So what's really great about this is not only applying it as a diffuse texture, but if I also go into that front face again, and I want to use that same texture, let's say, as a bump map so I can give it a little bit more grit to it. Well, instead of going and choosing load texture once again, yet there again is that burnt amber. So I'll just do that again. And you can see it applies it as a bump map now, and I'm getting a little bit more depth to the texture in there. So it's just eliminating a lot of steps. A lot of, you know, mm -hmm. you'd have to eliminate, you have to go two, two or three more steps just to get to there. It's eliminating that process. Now, one of the other great things I love, this is one of my um, favorite features about the, um, the new uh, Photoshop CC 3D. I'm going to get used to That's saying okay. that. CC 3D. <laughs> All right. Um, is if you want to edit a texture, let's say I wanted to you know, like do some effects to the front face of this text here. Well, I'm going to go into that diffuse for the front inflation and go to edit texture. Now you'll notice right away it's got this wireframe over my image. This is basically a wireframe overlay. So when you paint on the texture, you know exactly where it's going to fall on that 3D object. This was something I didn't have in the previous version. It was kind of a guessing game. You had to paint, save, and then wherever, the, wherever you painted landed, you don't have to be like, oh, well, it's not quite right. I'll undo it. And so this just makes things a lot easier. So I can see there's that wireframe for the word texture. And let's just say I wanted to add, like, I have my lightning brush here. I'm going to make, like, some cracks in the text here. Now, the cool thing is when I move my cursor over that, notice there is a little crosshair in the other document. This is indicating to me exactly hmm. where I'm falling on the object. Now, if I did the opposite of that, I move over here, notice there's a crosshair right there on the wireframe image. So it's two ways, mm. it's basically a two-way street here. So 
if I go and just create a new layer on here and then paint with black right here, there that crack shows up in there. Now, the cool thing is, because I'm painting on this particular texture, it also is cascading down to all the other surfaces that I applied that, that I used that start, same burnt amber on. So it's not only applying it as a texture, it's also applying it as that bump map. So it'll have that texture. If I close and save this, it'll maintain that texture and depth right inside that crack as well. So we get mm. that much more texture. And then I'll just simply do a render and see what I've got. And it just gives me that much more natural texture. So it's a lot of little, I mean, it's little enhancements that you know, just save you a tremendous amount of time and you're not having to go and re-edit your textures all over again and go, you make one change, you have to go and change all the other things and the other ones. This makes it a lot more streamlined by, uh, with that. So, so but that's just a new CC thing. That wireframe thing, I am loving that. I actually I discovered yeah. that by accident because I was just, when I just mm -hmm. downloaded it and started playing around with it, I'm like, oh, what is this? And I, I realized it was one of the coolest things ever. So, so I'm, so. I'm going to give you a suggestion for either uh, an article in Photoshop User Magazine or a blog post, and it would be Corey's 3D Dictionary. Because, mm. like, you just, for example, what was that pop up thing you said that, that where you're doing the front thing? The front inflation? Yeah, front inflation, but then you said, which is really the front of the text. Yeah. So that you just need to make a dictionary that says front inflation equals <laughs> and yeah. put it into plain English. Because I think that's one of the things that discourages people from 3D. And is I agree. like, yeah. what does a bump map do? What is front inflation versus extrusion versus? Mm -hmm. So just putting in plain English with little diagrams, this is what this means, I think would go a long way to help and, people and, use this kind of I stuff. And I absolutely agree. Because you look at this list, when I created this object, you know, it's, it's got front inflation. Front bevel, front extrusion. Then it's got boundary constraints, one, two, three, four, five, right, six. Exactly. Like, what, what is, what is that? that? Nobody knows what so, that is. Corey, we need your help. We need so, you to <laughs> explain to us what those things are. So I have been tasked. Maybe we need a book. Just I have on been tasked. A book or a multi part article or something. I, I think, you know what? There's a series of videos. Uh, you know what? I, don't know. I, was, oh, I was just told recently the hot tips issue from Photoshop User coming up. There you go. Perhaps I could tackle that. Yeah. Good call. All right. Mm. So make sure you play with that new CC stuff. There's also the very same features also in CS6. Um, you just don't have that wireframe overlay, so it makes it a little bit difficult. So if you're planning on getting into 3D, I highly recommend it. I'm done. All right. Cool. <laughs> Let's move on to Jessica, who has very sexy lips on her screen. <laughs> and I'm going to make them sexier and oh. lush and Ooh. shiny. Please do. All right. Yes. <laughs> Because sometimes you'll come back from a shoot and model's lipstick has gotten a little flat mm -hmm. or you have a stock photo that you're working with, like this one from iStockPhoto.com. Um, I'm going to show you how to make it shinier mm. and glossy. So I don't like to work on my background layer, so the first thing I always do is duplicate the background layer. Who taught her that? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. I picked it up that. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you can... Select your lips however you like, whatever your favorite selection method is, or you can peruse some tutorials on the NAP member site. Um, so I have a mask there that we're going to work with, and many people might know this trick going into the channels palette and command option click on the thumbnail for the RGB or control alt click on the thumbnail for the RGB, and that will, su that will highlight the lights in your area, in your image, in the highlights. Uh, <laughs> but the then brightness. what I'm going to do, because this is picking up a lot of things that we don't need, we're going to go back to the layers. And using our mask that we made, we're going to command option shift click on that mask, or control alt shift click, and it's going to take away the selection that we don't want, leaving just the light tones on the lips. And then we're going to go so down. So you use that existing layer mask to remove that area of the selection? Yes. OK. Yeah, just to take away the areas Very that nice. we don't want from our, from our highlight selection. Sweet. Then we're going to go ahead and use a levels adjustment to brighten up the whites of the lips and add some shine. And what that's going to do is take our highlighted area, and it's going to give us just the lights, because uh, the the levels adjustment is going to be affected most in the white areas and least in the black areas. Mm -hmm. We could even do another levels adjustment to our mask and darken up some of the midtones and pop up some of the lights. And then back, if you click on this area, you'll get your options for the levels. Mm -hmm. And you can drag this highlight slider down and pump those light tones up. 
And if we hide and show that, you'll see it's already shiny. She's crafty, that one. <laughs> but something you can do is Command-Alt-Shift-E and merge those layers. And go yeah, ahead and option drag your. <laughs> you can option drag your m mask for your lips, and we're going to go on over to the image area for the lips and do a blur, surface blur, and just raise this pixel radius a little bit and pump the threshold all the way up because if the lips had some gloss on them, they might be less sharp under the gloss than they would on top of the gloss. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that picks up a little funkiness. You could always bring the layer style, the layer mode to luminosity. And you see we're building more gloss. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to make it a little more glossy, you could Command J or Control J to duplicate that layer and go into your filter gallery and do some plastic, plastic wrap. <laughs> now you just want to do a, a tiny bit, and you don't. You want to have the highlights and the smoothness all the way up, and that's a little bit too crazy. But you can get a small brush with your black foreground color. I don't know. Shrink wrap lips. Pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little. It's a little much. But leaving one or two areas that have that like super gloss, drippy gloss look if you want that look. Kind of cool, just around the edges. Mm -hmm. So again, we're starting with some matte lips, giving them a little bit of shine, super shine, and extra glossy, crazy gloss that shine. Is so very cool. And I can, a few I, different methods. I love the fact that you use channels to make your selection, because not everybody really does. I love channels. As advanced as the selections have come, I, I still there are still I, times I, I, where it's I still find tremendous value mm -hmm. in using channels. Um, I, I still teach my the, my channels precon at Photoshop World. Mm -hmm. I've done it like eighty thousand times. <laughs> the <laughs> but Photoshop I think Channels book was the first book I designed here at the Media Group. Oh yeah, Scott's Channels book. Yeah, yes, Scott's I have that book, book somewhere. Yeah, and but I think that that whole discussion of using channels to make a selection is just bring reemphasize the point that you need to have various options available mm -hmm. because as great as a quick selection tool often is, mm -hmm. there are times where it doesn't do the job, right. so you have to have alternate plans. That's always, I always tell people, I said, you can never know too many selection techniques. Mm -hmm. it's just, and that's, and that's, I've even had asked people, ask, why are there so many different selection tools in Photoshop? Because there's so many different scenarios. You right. never know what you're going to run into. They're sure. all designed for very specific things, so master them all and you will, there won't be a challenge you can't handle. All right, let us take another quick break. We're going to come back. We have a prize to give away somewhere. We, we, we have a pile of books down here. We're going to pick <laughs> one and give one away. So stay with us. We will be right back. All right, we are back one more time, and it's prize time. I always love prize time because it means we get to give away stuff. What are we giving away today? Today, we have plug in book. with Nick. Everybody uh, knows Nick. Yeah, he's, a he's, cool that, guy. he's that guy down the street. <laughs> he's like, yeah, that, he's that the, guy. He had the thing. He yeah. shoots the pictures of the stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, no, it's uh, <laughs> plug in with Nick. Um, I, I assume it's all about using Nick plugins, of course. That and this sense. is by Josh. Here, I'll let you butcher the name instead Bad of me. Baddorf. Baddorf. Well, I apologize if I got that name wrong, but this will be yours, and how will it be yours? You will go to kelbytv.com slash contest and go into the show menu here, select Photoshop User TV, enter your name, email, website if you like, and give us a comment. It's really just kind of a random pick here, so if you'd like to have a request for the show, something you'd like to see, someone you'd like to see or not see, by all means, tell us that. We'd love to know. So, um... Be sure and do that, and we will put your name in the hat for the cool book, and that is all for prizes today. So, that's really an interesting process to watch when they take all the entries and put them into a hat. That we literally it's, print it's them out amazing. and put them in a hat. <laughs> we have we have a special hat. <laughs> the, the draw hat. 
We need to get that spinning wheel that we got, <laughs> that we had at Photoshop. Yeah, we have the monkey. <laughs> have that right here on the table and just. Spin it. Larry of Ohio, you won. No. All right, I believe that wraps it up for this week. We want to thank you guys for joining us, Dave. Thank you for coming in. My pleasure. Do you have anything coming up you want to? Uh, the main thing I've, I'm doing right now is I've got two new websites, one for people that are interested in Photoshop CC and one for people that are decided they're going to stick with Photoshop CS6. And there are so, quite a few. Yes. Yeah, so that way you've got both. Both bases are covered, whichever Absolutely. way you want to go. Yeah, and that's a good reason. I mean, I, and one thing I've been telling people is just like, I keep both versions on my machine. Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, I, I just never know. I mean, I mean usually yeah. when you get a new version, you, you tend to like get rid of the old version. But in this case, I'm keeping yeah. both versions right. because I, I like a lot of things about both of them. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, Jessica. Corey. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next time. See you next time. What, next time in we'll about be, two right, minutes. In about 10 <laughs> minutes, yes. We're going we're gonna to go and do a quick wardrobe change. Not really. But uh, we'll be back ever so shortly. Stay with us, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.